uh, there are spiritual scientists who identified these energy spots around the globe and could understand that it's a particular chakra energy. So it starts with Mount Shasta. It's the, it represents the root chakra energy. It's the Mount Shasta. So last time we were there and in Mount Shasta, where we felt this beautiful energy, all the four days that we spent there, we felt very grounded. We, uh, we had a lot of fun time also. This was a conference uh, conducted by Susan Shamsky. And uh, there were many spiritual scientists who gathered in that uh, particular time, solar eclipse time. We could meditate together. And uh, many beings, they are living still alive there. They are Lemurian beings who are inside the mountains. Particularly one uh, archangel, his name is, uh, what's the archangel of uh, Michael? Michael. Uh, he, he is there. Uh, Violet Flame? Violet Flame is also particularly with Mount Shasta. Eric is very well versed. Last time he presented about Mount Shasta energy, how it is connected with uh, Mount Kailash energy. So friends, uh, you know root chakra, without root chakra we are not here. We can't uh, live, feel the body. We, uh, this is our home. This is our temple. So the, if without this uh, root chakra, we don't feel rooted, grounded. We don't feel the physical nature of us. So important. If it is damaged, you know, we, we can't really uh, feel the sacredness of the physical life. So the Mount Shasta is so important. If any chakra of these places we damage, because with our actions, we pollute the nature there, we destroy the place, we uh, produce many polluted thoughts there, it's going to damage that particular place energy. And the second place is uh, sacral chakra energy, Lake Titicaca. This is in Peru, near Machu Picchu. It's a special place, Lake Titicaca. People say that it uh, uh, reproduces, it recreates new energy in you. People go there and meditate. It's a blue and uh, lake and it's very calm. People, they feel tranquil. So we were there in Peru and Machu Picchu. A special experience is a vortex place. It's a special energy. Any chakra energy, 777 miles, the energy will be uh, radiating. So here we found uh, beautiful experiences like uh, one experience is uh, one day we were in a hot spring in Machu Picchu. Uh, there's a bird coming from above. I'm looking for some signs. So this bird was communicating with me, said, uh, you will find a shaman. You don't need to search. Don't search for shaman. Shaman will find you. By the evening, we, uh, shaman came to us. We went through a special experience, a shamanic ritual, a shamanic ceremony. They call it a shamanic journey. So, so the shaman made me to drink ayahuasca. And for seven hours, I was in that ayahuasca. And a special experience. I can't even describe how, what, what happened to me. Because it's a non-ordinary experience. Whatever uh, Carlos Castaneda mentioned in his books, Teachings of John, Don Juan, or Journey to Ixtlan, Tales of Power, Power of Silence, Fire from Within, all that I experienced in that single experience. Uh, in that seven hours, I journeyed. I traveled within. Initially, the great darkness overtook me. There was only darkness. And like in a mummy movie, all the insects were eating my flesh and including my bones. I was just uh, vanishing from that place. And there's a great fear that was so much terrifying fear. Uh, coming over me in that moment. At that point of time, there is a spark that appeared and that spark of consciousness reminded me that I am the light. That very moment, I shape-shifted myself into a, a big snake, a gigantic snake like an anaconda. My, I could feel my tail, I could feel my body as a snake, completely shape-shifted. Rainbow and serpent, rainbow. Not initially, no? but anaconda. And as this anaconda snake, so big, I started journeying vertically. And initially, I was changing my form, my, sh my colors. 
I became orange snake, yellow snake, green, blue, indigo, and violet, and I finally became a rainbow serpent. And as rainbow serpent, I was by the time formless, in abstract, no words, is completely non-ordinary. I was in that uh, total different dimensional plane where I was watching everything. I could see filaments of uh, luminous fibers connecting every organism, every creature, entire creation. I could feel the interconnectedness. I understood something which I could not understand with logical mind. Something clicked into me and I felt I, I don't want to go back now. I want to be here only. This is so much oneness, interconnectedness. There's no uh, uh, differences, no separation. I felt so much wonderful. And, but there is a something from the absolute speaking to me at that point of time that whatever that you are experiencing, you have to carry it to the ground, to the physical plane. You have to carry this message. That point of time, I decided I need to come back. I came back slowly, descending down. It took almost seven hours for me to come back. And by the time I came back, I became a small baby, a little baby. And Mother Gaia, she came as old Peruvian woman with her uh, colored, colorful clothes. She was lifted me in her arms. She was singing a lullaby to me. She was singing a shamanic song. And I started breathing with the shamanic song, a specific rhythm. I started breathing the breath of life. I suddenly felt so much aliveness in me. And I understood that connection, reverence to the Mother Earth. First time I felt like rolling on the floor, just touching the Mother Earth, feeling the ground, feeling the mud. And first time I could do it, the sacredness I felt, be, I felt this world, this beautiful earth is so wonderful. It's a sacred land. And uh, uh, from that time, again, it's a breakthrough experience for me. I understood something. And uh, I was integrating. It took many months and years for me to integrate that experience, which is non-ordinary. So this is a special place, Machu Picchu. And uh, particularly this shaman's energy, the uh, Mayans and this civilization, they existed there, they lived there. Another place I mentioned already, Ayers Rock in Australia, this is a solar plexus energy. It's called third chakra. A very powerful, this is a fire from within, fire in the belly. So it's a power chakra, and many people, they uh, experience these uh, dimensions completely shifting. Even many UFO sightings were done here, around this place. Many people, they contact uh, aliens, extraterrestrials, they could contact extra planetary civilizations. So it, it, this is a special place on the Earth. Another place, uh, Glastonbury, is called Anahat Chakra, Heart Chakra Energy. So Glastonbury and Shaftesbury, Shaftesbury, these places are Heart Chakra. So around that, there's so much energy. So particularly Stonehenge. The way stones are arranged in a specific uh, manner and in a particular geometrical uh, configuration, a special place. We visited, we could meditate in the, uh, inside this uh, stone circle, stone hedge. It's a special uh, lifting energy, completely elevating energy. It's a heart chakra energy. And uh, we also visited a crop circle that was created recently then, when we visited that point of time. And overnight it appeared the crop circles around this stone hedge. So in uh, UK, you find many crop circles and some are man-made because after few circles came, many people, they tried to do with tractors, they could not do it well. But these uh, spontaneous appearances of these crop circles, some of them are very, very beautiful. They are overnight. They, uh, they're like extra uh, terrestrial energy, UFOs uh, contact, trying to contact us. They are speaking to us through the language of symbols. And another special place uh, is Egypt. Uh, we found long back, uh, from the very beginning, there was strange fascination towards pyramids. So we decided one day, uh, Life Research Academy team, uh, Radhsekar, Sridevi, Sharon, Ramya, and myself, and uh, Lakshmi, 
all of us, we decided we will go to Egypt to meditate uh, in the king's chamber. So when we landed there, it's a beautiful group energy also. We were uh, traveling through and we reached to the uh, Cairo. We visited this gigantic pyramid. There, when I saw this first uh, pyramid, I saw it, I started crying. Crying like mad. I could not stop my tears. It's joy, I don't know whether it is sadness, I don't know what it is. I was just crying. I, I could understand what a magnificent work these uh, Egyptians have done in building these pyramids. So we meditated, we went inside and uh, my completely, the, this third eye started opening completely and revealing many hieroglyphics like Thoth started speaking to me, channeling some kind of messages to me and for almost 11 days we stayed, I was only here. My third, third eye was completely open as if I was all the time seeing these hieroglyphics everywhere. So this is another special place that we visited and one must visit in their lifetime this uh, Giza complex, Giza pyramid. Just being present there to uh, just open the second awareness and meditate in the king's chamber there. And so the, the Egypt pyramid, Egypt, Mount Sinai, Mount Olives, they're all part of the Middle East. They're all fifth chakra vortex energy, fifth chakra. So even Mount Sinai we visited where Moses, uh, he received the Ten Commandments on the mountain. So it's a special energy there. Mount Olives, which is there in uh, Israel. We have not visited. We have not visited that place, but Mount Sinai is a special place, special energy there. So sixth chakra is called as dynamic uh, moving chakra. It's not specific. It's not, uh, we, we, people could not locate it any one place in the grove. Uh, right now, they say it's uh, shifted to Western Europe. The sixth chakra energy is in Western Europe. And uh, uh, people, they experience, whenever they go to this kind of places, they experience strong third eye uh, visions. It opens and they, they, something is revealed to them. And you know, the seventh chakra, the seventh energy center, we don't call it as chakra because it's not a chakra. It's a, a multi-dimensional nature of us. It's called Sahasrara, crown. And the seventh state, it's not chakra. So this seventh state or Sahasrara center is there in India, in Himalayas, Mount Kailash. Himalayas is a big power generator. And the whole of India is filled with this Mount Kailash energy, this Kashmir to Kanyakumari. You touch every place in India, it's there. So we could uh, travel to uh, only few places it was my dream to travel to Mount Kailash, but I could not go. Every time I plan to go there, something happens to me. Because it could be my uh, death uh, urge or some kind of uh, strange fear that uh, grips me. I recall a past life where I died in snow-capped mountains. It, 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 definitely it is Himalayas, where I was, uh, um, you know, inside this cave and cave collapsed and in that uh, snow, I died. So, one time we went to uh, Himalayas, Chardham, where I felt again this death coming to me. Uh, I almost died in uh, Kedarnath. I could not tolerate the uh, cold and I was uh, gripped with so much of uh, chill, chilly feelings and very much uh, body memory was there. At that point of time, my friends, all of them made me to uh, come back into life. So there's something that uh, I want to visit with but all I, the team. But I think in this lifetime we'll make it. Oh, we'll make it. <laughs> and we'll come back with that experience. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so and friends, we have visited many wonderful uh, power places in the Himalayan region. And we just want to share two experiences. One is Leh Ladakh, the trans Himalayan. It's a wonderful place. And we met some healers here in Ladakh. And uh, they're healing, they do healing in a very different way. They are called Lamos, and they're generally ladies doing this healing. They just take a pipe, and they'll just, 
Yes. They just, uh, what do you call? Pipe, suck it. Suck, suck it. The negative Whatever energy. is there. So most of the time, there are so many military people in the Ladakh, Ladakh area. So whenever they have these bullet wounds, they go to these healers and they just suck the bullets. They are called Lamos. When they enter into a trance, they speak Tibetan language. They, they start speaking different language. And uh, they are amazing people. We met uh, three of them. One old woman, still alive, 90 year old. Still, every day morning she goes into trance, there will be hundreds of people, they coming and she takes the pipe and she sucks. One uh, man, he had a lot of anger issues towards the uh, wife. He was there and uh, she sucked something and an insect came out of uh, his head <laughs> and she sucked out. He said, uh, this insect is uh, in your brain. And uh, strange things, we can't explain through science, through physics, through chemistry. Yeah. It's a, a completely a non-linear world. So Lamos are special people for so living in Ladakh. So they suck cholesterol, the kidney stones, the gallbladder stones. stones. They, suck out. they do amazing healing. So yeah. it, these power places definitely they are very very wonderful people drawn to live there. There are some people wherever we go, we uh, are not searching for only the physical things to see with our, our eyes. We want to meet people who are living there, who are carrying the wisdom, some special wisdom with them. And, and we also yeah. dream there, we want to sleep there, and we also meditate there. So that's how we connect to a power spot. And another place we, I want yeah. to mention is We uh, have visited a place called Patal Bhuvaneshwar, and this place is mentioned in the Skanda Puran. It's very ancient. So actually in this Kali Yuga, the Shankaracharya visited this place first. He rediscovered that place. And he found there is a Shivlinga inside the cave. And the vibrations are so powerful, people are not able to bear those vibrations. So he has shielded that Shivlinga with uh, some meditation practices. So it's so powerful. And uh, this cave, you have to go like this. Vertically. Vertically down. And there is a small entrance. So you have to go down with the help of a rope and the minute you go down, because uh, in the ancient scriptures or the Puranas, it said that the Seshanagu is holding the earth, the Seshanagu, Adi Seshu. So the minute you go inside, all the rock formations are so natural, they're, they're all natural formations. So you can immediately find Adi Seshu there, inside, the multi-hooded snake. And the whole tale goes like this. And the, mo the minute you are walking inside the cave, you can feel you are walking on the tail of a snake. It's and it is hollow down because we know that there are seven lokas up and seven lokas down. So you can feel that hollow, that there is something down, deep down. And as you enter this cave inside, everything is so meaningful. Each rock is so significant, it is conveying so much. And uh, you know, there is one rock formation which is like uh, Shiva's jata. And you can really feel, th this is the real Shiva's jata, you know, the white and black combination. And then the minute you enter inside, there are four portals, energy portals. And they say that in the uh, ancient times, people used to travel from these energy portals. One portal connects you to the Himalayas, to the Mount Kailash. One portal connects you to the Puri Jagannath. One portal connects you to uh, the down south, Rameshwaram, Rameshwaram. So, so if you meditate, sit there, you can feel these energy portals. You can feel the energy. And uh, at one place, uh, there is uh, this uh, Markandeya Maharshi has meditated there. So you can really feel the, what do you call when somebody meditates for a longer time, the impressions of the Maharshi sitting there and meditating. You can see the impression there. In the rock. Yeah.